So at the end, we'll have to get up to C. Might be a little bit of a cross contouring. I thought I saw a sessile sea cucumber. Or no, yes, sessile sea cucumber. Yeah, there's quite a few up solide. It's probably psolos. I don't know the species. second anyways. Bridge nav. One more step, five zero meters, zero zero five. Thank you. We talked about what all those little red dots are. Anemones. And oh, all right. We we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. We don't know the species, though. At least I don't know. That's some of um, our colleagues that are working with the with this data and identifying the video, the the animals from the videos. It's quite abundant, but we still. Don't know exact the species. Whatever they make it. Oh yeah, Megan. Megan's in the living room, in the lounge. Really glued to the TV. Megan, if you can hear us, join the conversation from the lounge. I have to say, the lounge is a misnomer. A lot of work happens there. It's a little what? A, the lounge. It's not just a resting place. A lot of work yeah. happens in there. And entertainment. And, and entertainment, yes. <clears throat> we watched a couple classic movies. A couple this, is, this is true. Yeah, the last few days. <laughs> <laughs> or bad weather. Being bad weather, yeah. Being weathered out. Someone really likes James Bond. There's an inordinate uh, number of James Bond movies. <laughs> Not James me. Bond. We've we've now developed a checklist of what every James Bond movie must have. Uh, what? Well, I don't know if I can say that over air. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You just have to watch all of them to you find out. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> formulaic. <laughs> yeah. I actually hadn't watched any of the Daniel Craig ones until recently. I w went watched it ahead of some flights, watched them on flights, and the formula was, yeah, pretty apparent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's almost comforting, really. Yeah. It's not going to stray. Oh. Tanner crab that we found out a few years ago that is eating bacteria that are uh, munching on the, met well, the methanotrophic bacteria, right? So they, the bacteria lives on the methane seeps and the crabs are eating the bacteria. So then they have the signature on their tissues. So it's, and we eat this crab. So it was one of the first links, the first public, first papers that described 
a direct connection between the production from a methane seep into oh. our table because oh, wow. we, we eat those those are tenor crabs so oh, wow. and I don't know if there was a video from our early dives in maybe 2013 where the crab was munching on these bubbles of methane and then a bunch of methane got trapped under the carapace and then it floated around it floated up yeah like maybe 30 centimeters and then the gas bursted away and then it, almost like he was farting <laughs> yeah. and that was very intriguing cool video collect that collect what slope though i think we have that on our youtube channel yes yeah i think sarah seabrook had some yeah she she's co-author she's the yeah. lead author on that publication with us so we collected some crabs during our cruises and then we collected sediment samples and we yeah. you know we put the puzzle together sailed with her down in um astoria canyon nice fabio where do the um methane deposits come from that we're seeing here? uh How those are, they are well at the cascadia margin we have the subduction of two tectonic plates and there's uh, a lot of pressure built build up yep. and sediments that accumulate on top of you know organic matter from geological times and even present days so then there's methane gas that forms and with because of the pressure sediments building up on, or pile, yeah. piling up on top they they want to squeeze they kind of get squeezed out what is this thing is this a sun. fish yeah that's it's a, a fish that's a zoarcid Interesting. Dana, my next move, do you want me to get Atalanta more off the wall? But it's still okay with see in there. Mm. So we kind of see I that. I could just over. keep on going as is, and I think we'll, we're not too far from our target. Mm -hmm. see what? We see that throughout um, Cascade or Claquat and Barkley. It's the same phenomenon with the, yeah, with the yeah. seeps. Exactly. And we can presume it keeps going. We just don't have observatories there like as far as the next shelf up or the next well canyon? there's is a pretty like martin uh Cherwatt and his colleagues are trying to map out the fluxes of methane from all these sites and it's like the uh, one similar with the hydrothermal vents that they're ephemeral they, they the bubbling sites they can shut off yeah for years and then appear elsewhere so it's kind of a chasing game to find the the sippage and this site. is kind of part of what we're trying to do what we were trying to do with the tully where we're doing the bubble capture to use their adcps to track this kind of thing so yes. we can have like more broad range sampling is that the idea yeah the the ships operating in tandem with the sensors that we have on the seafloor yeah they give us give us a better spatial resolution of yeah. the the seeping yeah, because we obviously don't have information yeah. about some of the other places yeah. where this might be happening. Yeah. Cool. So you mentioned sediment Just in that whole process. Show me the toilet. Is so we're looking at a a cliff wall right now. So is a, there sediment? A canyon wall. Canyon wall. <laughs> yeah, it's a cliff. So we're, we're are we? Sub, we're in a submarine canyon, yeah. And is there sediment build up on there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's sediment falling on top of the, you know, ro whatever base rock is, is is the the wall of the canyon composed, which I should do some study here for this area. There's carbonates and ancient reefs um, that were in previous uh, geological time periods where sea level was lower, right? Fabio, and I think we're kind of Stop me if this is not your expertise or if you don't have a comment, but this Barkley, Barkley upper slope and what we're kind of looking at here relative to Cascadia, is this part of like what they'd call the continental shelf still? And Cascadia is more oceanic or continental no. crust? We are at the continental slope. So, so if there's a subduction zone, is this a stuff's going underneath of this? Come up flat yes, please. at the Cascadia. Yeah, exactly. At the like that plates. Yeah. Yeah, the Juan de Fuca plate is diving under the American plate, North American plate. And this at the 
subduction zone. But it, that that diving point is a bit deeper than we are. We are upper. Yeah. We are 800 meters. We are at mid slope. Uh, so the shelf is way when we reach about 200 meters. We are we reach the shelf and yeah. then we we don't have that steep topography anymore. We have a flat, more or less flat terrain. And this is by upper slope there. Uh huh. This is by upper slope. No, up past. even even past upper slope, the 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 the, the head of the canyon and uh, it, it reaches up the area of the upper slope. Okay. So at 400 meters, right? We come up another five. But the shelf is, as we pass, going to Folger, more or less. Folger, we are in the shelf. And this is somewhat unique for Folger. the, um, for like the Pacific, the wet, like our Pacific, like uh, this, this Pacific side, this coast of America, of North America, right? This big shelf we've got here. Is it unique kind of to Canada, or does it extend down to Oregon and Washington as well? Yeah, the continental shelf. Uh, in the Pacific, as opposed to the Atlantic, let's say, it's a much thinner continental shelf, actually. Uh, so we have we don't have a lot of major. Uh, we have a few, but not major river systems that you know deposit sediments, and of course because of the the subduction zone, also uh, we have this deeper uh, margin, and uh, the shelf the the ends up being sh um, narrow. Uh, and we have all these canyons indenting the shelf. Um, That's good, thanks. We have much less can canyons uh, indenting the, the the continental shelf in the Atlantic Ocean because we have much more extended shelves. Yeah. Right? So the canyons occur, you know, in, uh, indenting the, the continental margin. This is an important feature for nutrient upwelling and and, and such. Yeah, canyons are very um, particular uh, topographic features. Um, they, as they approach the, sh the shoreline, they, they kind of add or act as a gutters, <laughs> all the organic matter that mm -hmm. uh, gets trapped. We normally see a lot of kelp debris and, and, and pieces of kelp that are channeled down through the canyon, and even other types of organic matter like marine snow and other, uh, we call it particulate organic matter that descends from the surface, it gets trapped and channeled through the canyon. The currents are uh, accelerating. Look at this, that's a cool. You said kelp gets kelp? trapped? Yeah, yeah. Uh, likely. Could you give us an example? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, right. <laughs> no, so there it is. That's yeah. There's been a lot of studies. Actually, was my my PhD thesis in Hawaii. We studied different canyon systems in not in New Zealand, in Hawaii, California. So there are different types of. Depends what is on the coastline, you know. Like in in Hawaii, we were in Kaneohe Bay. There's this huge submarine canyon that, you know comes from the shore all the way to 2,000 meters and you have this macroalgae that builds up uh, on the canyon floor at 2,000 meters we're diving with submersibles and you see this giant uh, you know it looks like dust bunnies like yeah of ma macroalgae entangled we collected some samples that were up to 12 species of algae bundled up so yeah the canyons are really active because the currents get accelerated, they funnel kind of in this narrow topography. So the, can the currents go up and down canyon, but uh, there's more flow. That's why these corals are here too, because right. there's a lot of nutrients in the water column and they can thrive. There was a viewer wondering if perhaps those are also feather duster worms that we're seeing. Is that possible? No, those are actually so. Those are solid holothurians. The white, okay. yeah, those are their branchy, respiratory branchy. Oh, maybe maybe the the little red dots. Oh, I, oh no, those are actually anemones. Anemones. Yeah.
Oh, is that a hay fish? Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Yeah. Is that a sponge? Uh, one more step, five zero meters, zero zero five. Thank you. Whatever that was was pretty cool. Sponge. <laughs> we might have that on there, our guide. Yeah. The class, I think, could be that Starocalyptus. Or Acantascus. Yeah, that looks like a little vase, right? This guy. Uh, right? A glass sponge. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, one of the uh, main group. They have this silica spicules in it, but I think it could be this one. It looks like a vase. Vase, yes. So just for viewers, we are referencing the ONC Marine Field Life, field, sorry, Marine Life Field Guide. I believe it's available on iBooks. I have on our website too as a PDF, don't we? No. We had the version one. We should we should have that. Oh, that's a different coral species there. Which oh. Is that a black, another kind of black coral there? Uh, I'll give you the name pretty soon. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a definitely an antipatarian. That's Batipatis patula, according to our colleagues from the Department of Fisheries. It's very similar. I'll, I'll just, oh, again, nice. Biodiversity, huh, Fabio? Yeah. Well, f to, to be honest, this is all. Oh, yeah, three species. Click it. Do you want me to three. click this one? Three species in a single frame. I got it. We have a pretty low diversity, actually, because we are in an oxygen minimum zone. So it's, if you dive in the cliff in the slopes of Hawaii, you'll see like uh, 10 more species of corals than you see here or in shallow, much shallower waters where we don't have the, the, the core of the, the, the low oxygen levels. That's a cool little frame. That's our local coral diversity looks like. Mm -hmm. That's it there? <laughs> Come on, well, Dirk, it's beautiful. Well, it's they are really abundant and important, but uh, not a huge diversity, no. What's the white one? That's a uh, Chrysopatis speciosa, we think, or it could be Chrysopatis formosa. We are still not baby hagfish or something there, or an eel pout. Big rockfish. So we are reaching one and a half hour. I think we're still doing pretty well. We've reached what now? Hour and a half? Hour and a half now. So we're close to end of survey of a transect. Your number two, my number three. Okay. So we number still have to make two, it three. down, right? <laughs> then we're going to, I think we still have time for the third one. And now we're about 30 meters away from waypoint D. Waypoint D or C? I think it's a D. Looks like a D. Uh, still up slope though, so. Mm -hmm. 
All these little overhangs seem to house a fish. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Uh, definitely a species of rockfish. Look down just a bit. Further. Yeah, it seems like there's something under everyone. What do you think, Fabio Sebastis, for the genus? Yes. Folks are wondering if we're seeing hagfish or eels. Oh, hagfish. Hagfish? We, yeah, we've seen some, a few hagfish. Not a very abundant, but we saw half a dozen that I remember since the start. That's a cool picture. You want the skate in there or not with the skate? Skate, skate. <laughs> Get the skate, skate, skate. Now, Get would you skate. call that a short tail or a long tail? Lauren will tell you that. I've seen okay, this one, one very moment. often, honestly. This is this is That's new a, for me. Oh, this is our Bati Raja. A lutica? A lutica. Uh, or Trachura. Don't worry, we're getting great pictures of it, so. Someone else Whatever with it more is. expertise can tell yeah. us. So Fabio, we're following this uh, contour. Um, there's that actual target for the end of survey C, but it's a bit upslope. I don't know if you just want to... Yeah, no, let's skip on, on here, maybe reach the same north. That's something new, isn't it? Okay, it's yeah, right. The, the same north position. Yeah. The C That's pen? cool. That's a C, uh, C whip. That's Alipteris California. Californicos. There's also California something there on the top there. That little those giant, see that's how they, the rockfish are protected here, so you can see they are. Yeah, it's quite big, if that's 10 centimeters. Yeah, that's some 30 probably. Another hagfish as we speak about it. Yeah, what's that wow. thing in the... In Excellent. The, that's a cool... Yeah, yeah, I cool got frame. it, I got it. Are you happy wow. with the white balance Ooh. there, Fabio? Oh, we got, yeah, it's pretty Atlanta good. Atlanta just got inked. Oh. <laughs> oh, and yeah. what's uh what's that in Shot. the top corner? Is that just oh I, I, I'm doing it. Megan Putz was telling me that there are two types I'm just of choosing inkings. the frame for you. What's this one here? Yeah, let me. Okay, I've got it autofocus. You tell me when you want it. No, you you you, you do the framing. Okay. You're a photographer, aren't you? Amateur. Uh, well, I guess after this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good training for you. Well, I, technically, I'm getting paid to do this, so professional. Another hagfish, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We are hagfish over there. So we're at the end of that ship cool. move, and we're almost done just at the north. He wants to go to like the north equivalent of that. So another 10 meters, and we'll be finished this transect. Great, and then I think we'll just have one more. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, what you'd like to do is drop off to the deeper point and we'll yeah. be ending up here is that correct yeah okay 10 meters from now right or yeah yeah so we'll we'll kind of like move the ship off the wall yeah down 200 meters um, horizontal drop down to the base and then run this transect up the wall yeah exactly okay Ed, what do you think of the white balance on the still camera? Is that reasonable? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, first, I got to figure out how I can see it. You're on PC2. Yeah. PC two. Yeah. PC. It's also amazing. PC2. This I can't see that monitor. That's okay. That's what reasonable? Yeah. What's that white? That's that. It's kind of what I've been aiming for, cucumber? so I hope it's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see cucumber. Oh, well. If it looked like a native rank for a second, it's kind of. Uh, that would have been nice. You could uh, move Atalanta off into the deep water now. If you want. Okay, Raj, we'll do. Uh, that move will be bearing th one three two. One three two. One three two, and it will be two one five meters. Bridge nav. 
step 215 meters, bearing 132. So, yes. Thank you. Pictures of this. And I'll just drop a target that we ended the uh, survey here. All right. Ending of transect number, you choose the number. <laughs> 13. And horizontal transect, how about that? Oh, Rennie, you can just you can put three. I was just joking because uh, oh, I didn't or, know. Or she we kind of got confused in the beginning, uh, in between transect one and two. Uh, so Dan, Dan was just doing some uh, adjusting of the vehicle until. So in theory, this is uh, transect number two. Number two, Roger. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, stepping into the middle of it. Okay. Uh, that ship move is called in. Atalanta will shortly be pulling us off the wall. And Dan will get the coolest shots he can before we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> wait for. Oh, I'll just hold it there. Yeah. I gotta get the ISO ready. So that's a Holothurian, not a nudie. Push it there. Uh, up. Yeah. To the, the white. Brink. Can we look at the nudie brink thingy? It, yeah. Hi, Megan. Hi. Megan is there. Yay! Oh, yay. There's Megan. Of course. Megan. Yes. That's the debate. Just to the, Which the one right. is it? Yeah. That it looks, looks like, like a nudie brink to me. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Because it has got fluffy stuff on uh, the top. Alabaster, yeah. maybe? Oh, that doesn't really have the frosted tips. Something that to the right of it. Frosty tips. Frosted tips. Frosted Can't tips. a little shrimp to the right? Can we zoom in, Ed? Yeah, yeah it looks in. like a pandalin. Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute Whoops, sorry. You can laser zoom in. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to do. See, so it's so yeah. pretty. You can yeah, yeah. zoom in. Uh, Make a push right in. All right. Go What's this real thing quick. just to the right of it? Yeah, just it's like, like a, a weird shrimp thing. I couldn't tell. to the right. It's a pretty and cool looking. Four, this is a three, great shot. Three, two, one. Slow out. That's a cool yeah. Yeah, species for, our, for a guide. Into that Holding. Shrimp. Four, three. Oh, yeah. Two, I haven't seen that before. One. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen the shrimp out. here. Oh. Uh, push in on the shrimp. Here. Shrimp, you got it. This is... Probably. It looks like Plesionica. Yeah, we don't have the ID on this guy, oh. but we have an R guide. On the shrimp if you want. Unidentified shrimp. Nice. Yeah. I don't They're think in it's the family Pandality. Pandalidae, yeah. Oh, cool. The most common shrimp here is Aptocarpus. Aptocarpus. Yes. To call, uh, the ones on coming out. That's what we saw in the coral earlier. That would zoom in. Yeah, yeah. You said they're heterocarpus? Heptocarpus. Heptocarpus. Yeah. I'll push him past your housing. I have to call up the uh, I really would have thought shrimp we expert. See more fish. But Ooh. no sable fish, huh? Sable fish are more at the axis of the canyon, or mid east. But they're also at Barkley Upper Slope. Or at the node, right? Yeah, but that w my point is they're in the flat. Oh, they in don't the like flat. this. Deep yeah. We saw one or two on this yeah, dive yeah, so far, yeah. but. It's kind I'll of cool. Bump the porch in it a few times, Danny. I can give us some. Uh, Just a little bump wash. in and bump out, yeah. Car wash. Off good when you smack it back on the there, There's a fish, Dirk. Yeah, thanks. I would, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 the I opposite of Fabio. He mentions kelp, and we see kelp, and I, I mentioned seen that one. No fish. Yeah. What else do you want to see, Fabio? Uh, Elephant seal? Yeah. <laughs> uh, why not? They're coming Holy. down to 620, 40 meters. If we install a fish acoustics experiment here with the bait, with the bait release system, they might come. <laughs> <laughs> the study should be. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, I, I, I don't know if uh, Megan is listening down. to us, but yeah, she, she she might be helping us dealing with the, the bait. Oh, yeah. With the bait uh, release system. 
Yeah, I think she's I'm gone back. to bed. Oh, she's, she's gone to bed. I think so. Car wash here. Oh, Wag. there's some, there's some life for you, Fabio. A few corals down there. But yeah, this is not nothing like the other site, hey? Near to the hydrates. It's more corals over there. Yeah, we f I found a bit more density I'm here, sure especially in this less nook right. here. Thank you. Yeah. Less. I want to uh, make a look up a little bit. Sure. I think we're right here. I guess. You found some, or you think there would be more? No, I think there's more here. I think we're here. Oh, you did. Okay. You should look at that white sponge. Is that interesting? In Sat Feed One. That guy. We haven't seen that. It looks like a croc. I haven't seen that. It looks like it might be a demo sponge of some kind. Or a croc. So of, or a croc. Uh, yeah. A shoe oh, isn't it? <laughs> it looks it like is, a croc. It is a croc. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> laser zoom there. Yep, laser zoom. Dan, you got your Crocs on still? <laughs> oh, I got my boots. Oh, it's, on. A, it's a sponge. Sea, sea cucumber. No, 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 no it's, it's, a, it's only a sponge. It's yeah. a sponge. Oh, I should call it. Sally Bees might like this one. But Spon it looks exactly like a Croc. <laughs> <laughs> Spongy well, looking sponge. If it's new, that's a sp Croc sponge. <laughs> Croc sponge. Cool. Come down by me, Danny. Some mycelians there. Yep. That's good. Thanks. Right there, holding. Oh wow. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's far away from the digital stills. So mm. Can't really get it. Sorry. Uh, so it's right underneath. Yeah, I think it's a demo sponge, not a glass sponge. What makes you say that, Megan? Uh, the channelization that you're seeing, and it, it just. Oh no. It There's doesn't look no, 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 so single like single off kill. Yeah. Right. It kind of has sort of a denser look to it too. So demo sponges can have glass pieces, but they have incorporate other types of uh, skeletal scratch structure. Um, demo sponges are uh, like, you know, the, the sponges that you might buy, um, yeah. okay. like sea sponges for, you know, washing your dishes. I'm gonna have to, uh, I know what I'll do, I'll see which way I'm gonna turn this way and uh, come back towards you a bit. Too far away. Let's see the sponge again. Oh, I don't know if I got enough leash to turn around. You want more leash? Yep. Coming down. Hey, Megan, if you're still listening. Yep. Yeah. Um, can you remind me, you mentioned that the squid and octopus can ink in two different kind of ways. Oh, yeah, so they'll, they can do like a cloud inking that's sort of like your uh, your ninja smoke. Okay. Uh, and then they have what's called a pseudomorph, which they incorporate mucus into their ink, and it's a, like a distraction. Uh, for whoever they ink, and it sticks to them, and it's really gross and smelly. <laughs> so we got a cloud ink or a... A pseudomorph ink. Pseudomorph ink. Cool. It's another croc sponge. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, we reach a little bend here. Come down uh, eight uh, meters or so. Of the cliff. Coming down. Oh. Is the rock here um, like a... A mudstone, or do we know what kind of rock is making up this canyon? I don't know, actually. I should know, but I don't. It looks like um could be a mudstone, but some areas there really look like a, a carbonate reef. Yeah, whenever we bump it, it turns white. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That's it's cool. good. Those photos are really. Actually yeah, it's on. I'll send you some some geologist friends. I, I turned off your down lights there on the DSC. Yeah, it's yeah. always hard to tell what the geology is. Oh. Like yeah. when you're on a volcanic area, you're like, yes, it's basalt. I got this. Mm -hmm. But the, the continental yeah. shelf, it's challenging. 
Yeah, it depends what we had here in the past, in a very, sometimes very long past, but I know there's a paper that describes the, I just it ran out of my mind now. I have the down lights off because the particulate coming off the vehicle is it really lights it up because we're going down. Take it a while to clean it up. That looks different. We're reaching one hour forty five minutes from the start. Do you have a time limit? <laughs> yeah, sort of. A couple hours, more or less, or plus or minus. Is, is plus or any, minus four hours. <laughs> is there any chance it's going to be minus? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Plus. <laughs> uh, the ship will be at the target in about 15 minutes by the time Atalanta arrives and Herc settles into the start. It'll be a little bit after that, and then I'm guessing we'll. Dan, what were you doing? Point three on the way up. Yeah. Point yeah. Three, yeah. Uh, we'll go point three, and then the ROV will be tracking faster vertically. So we'll reach about point five probably, which is what you're calling for here. And yeah, yeah well, I suspect it'll be about as long as the first one because it looks yeah, like yeah. to be about Short. the same length. Yeah. That was probably 15, not even fifteen minutes or something. Yeah, it, look, it looks maybe about the same. And then, if there's no more tasks here, we're just gonna head midwater over to the access site. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what the dive plan says. Midwater. I, um, I initially thought we were gonna follow the bottom, but if midwater is the way to go, no way. Oh, yeah, Dan no. loves midwater. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. We could do the rest of his watch midwater. He'd be happy with that. <laughs> I thought he liked his male flowers. I don't know. I you do. can smell yeah, flowers. Yeah, no, he likes to have his fingers in the weeds. Well, that was a nice continuum forest on Atalanta. There's our map here. Sea yeah. pig. That's that one's not, not a, a sea pig. Uh, sea pig. That's, no, it's not a sea pig. <laughs> that's that's Panikia. <laughs> You can really have all the biologists come out of the woodwork just by doing a rolling <laughs> halibut. Oh, that's how you get people <laughs> to, to yeah. respond to you. Yeah, yeah, okay. So. I'm really missing my pilot camera right now. What's the name of the starfish in, or sea star in, uh, What's that TV show? Oh, man. These kids get older, you forget all that stuff. Whoa. Length of the transit, is that what you're asking? Ascent. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's like 30 minutes, I think. Maybe a little more, 40 maybe. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's much more than that. 45 minutes. The transit from here to Axis is going to be, if if we get up to about a knot uh, fast enough, it'll be about a, an hour, yeah. an hour or so, and then we have to kind of get situated back over there, so add some fluff time in there, yeah, hour so 20. Okay. You're figuring a one knot transit speed? 
That's a tow speed. Um, yeah, I mean, we can, it depends on if they're going to adjust heading a bit, um, but otherwise as fast as we can what, uh, get what, to access. What bearing is that from here? It'll be to the n um, northeast. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, so they'd have to... <laughs> they'd have to turn and burn. Well, if they can turn a little, you know, like a little north to help uh, to have the wind, but I don't, that's going to be if... It's going to be whatever the bridge pilot would like to do, and we'll try to get as fast as we can over there. Yeah. Our president CEO, Kate Moran, just uh, chimed in on the chat, saying that the sediments that we see here are silt and clay stone associated with the accretionary prism that forms the from the convergence of the Juan de Fuca and the North American tectonic plates. Mm. Yeah. So along the lines what we we talked earlier about the subduction zone, but of course giving more detail about the types of sediments. Kate so says, thank I you, see Kate. I see your much. biology and I raise you geology. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I hope you're enjoying the corals as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, not, it's not very late. It's 9 p.m. So it's a lot of our staff on shore might be following the dive. I think so. It's also down in the lounge and there's quite a few people watching it. I think this, this is quite interesting. People are pretty stoked for this. Yeah. Fabio really talked it up, so <laughs> we volunteered to take all the pictures. That's nice of you. Can you, uh, hey Danny, if you get a chance, can you open the iris on the bubble camera just a little bit? I don't know if it'll, it's probably on auto. What are the pink whip corals that I keep seeing? Those are the bubble gum. The, uh, they don't branch here? Um, yeah, maybe it's an oxygen limitation there. They, our colleagues from the FO, they looked at those and uh, images from our last year. It can be, be either good. Paragorgia, uh, Yamesi, or Sibogorgia Califlora. That's what we are, uh, yeah, trying to confirm. Maybe, okay. maybe at the end Perfect. of the dive, we will collect one specimen of this of this particular. <laughs> That would be good. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a Paragorgia that didn't branch. Yeah. That's maybe this this other one. Uh, that'll do. Thanks. So speaking of which, how how do we confirm species? You just get. We have taxonomists to look at uh, physical specimens. Um, yeah. So you look at the either morphological structures or. You can look at the genetics. Yeah. Nowadays, you have to really um, use both approaches. Yeah. Especially if you're trying to determine if it's just an individual species, like an individual's, the way it presents, right? And it might be just unique, somewhat unique. Yeah, there's some a lot of species that present um, show you know, morphological similarities that you may think they are the same um, same species, but when you look at their genomes and and they are they constitute the variability is, is high enough that they, they can be placed in different species or different genus and When they make a species ID like that, Fabio, is that what they enter into the eDNA database then? Is that where some of that comes from? Sorry, uh, Ed, can you repeat? So, yeah, for the eDNA, uh, mm. where, where does that lookup table, where does that come from? Where are, How are they able to... Well, eDNA is like a sort of a, you look at the environment. And right. E stands for environment DNA, yep. so it's like, is a mush-up of what, what is in there, what is all you know parts of organisms and and skin and, and bones right. and so when you analyze a uh, eDNA you, you you're doing like uh, you can do like a, a metagenomic approach so you're not looking at 
you look at parts of genes of several species. So they, right. you need to have a, a database that to compare with. Compare with. So it's uh, why a lot of people think that eDNA is like the answer for everything. You still have to do a lot of groundwork and to have the libraries available to compare. Yeah. Then there's a lot of species in the deep sea that are unknown. So if you do uh, environmental DNA study in the deep ocean, you're still gonna lack right. about the base. Uh, you know, there's gonna be years to build a great baseline. So that was really the crux of my question: is on these fish IDs, they don't just there's not a globally openly available library of DNA that they can enter that in. Yeah, they have. Yeah, oh, they, they have gene bank. There's lots of different uh, uh, libraries there. Um, I'm an ecologist, so I don't make use of those <laughs> gene right. libraries. But right. I have colleagues who are always um, um, referring to those uh, and adding to actually the, the, our study of the tenor crabs a few years ago. And right. Yeah, coming in. We added uh, the whole holding gene sequences of the bacteria uh, that, that were hosted inside the crabs. We deposited in the online library, nice. uh, gene libraries. Also, uh, microbial communities that we sample from the sediments also. We also added in collaboration with uh, Andrew Turber at Oregon State mm -hmm. and, and Sarah Seabrook. We published quite a bit in, into those um, databases. Great. There, Fabio, now we'll have a um, better picture of a flounder or this sole or whatever. Okay. Sea What's a deep sea sole? Thanks. Sad to see who was on. Sure. Question? Well, this looks like a different sponge than the other one that's kind of more vase-like. Phase-like? What about this? Is this tomato, a tomato. Is this a different? Yeah. <laughs> is this a different sponge than what we've yeah, seen before? Yeah, this one looks like this guy. Or is that a uh, mushroom coral? Mushroom coral. Yeah, it just went off the top of the screen. Oh, I missed it's it. It's a little pink and looks kind of like an anemone. Yeah, it looks like one, perhaps. Yeah. I don't see it. Where are you looking? Uh, with the crab facing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one. It's, it has all its polyps out right now. Doesn't look very mushroom-like. <laughs> yeah, it only looks mushroom-like when it pulls yeah. in its polyps. Yeah. Oh, it's got a really yeah. neat branching. Mm-hmm. That's cool. For us, I like them. Coming in slow, say when. What do you think they are, Megan? It's an anthemastinae uh, mushroom That's coral. Cool. Right there. That's the one that used to have a different name, is that right? Or is anthemastinae the anthemastis the... Anthemastis is, is the, the um, genus, but there's been some debate on if it's some are pseudoanthemastis so, yeah, or anthemastis. Well, you have yeah. to look at uh, the reproductive parts. So you mm. got to get a really good zoom to be able to tell. Yeah. Anthemastinae is the subfamily. So it's always the safest way to go if you can't get a good view. Mm -hmm. well, we can get a good view. We have loads of those in Hawaii. Oh, right. yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah. But I didn't see this one in the guide. It's an interesting coral yeah, to the bottom it. right as well. Oh, yeah, those look like um, Some sort of, um, another type of soft coral. Like Is that the, the, the one, Solemnifera, the ones that stick to stuff? I couldn't tell if it was on it, on oh. it or sticking out. Those are solitary corals, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or no. Oh, no. It's Looks like there's like some sort of worm on that mushroom coral. Yeah, or sediment yeah. or something. Oh, maybe it's sediment. Yeah. That'd be weird, but normally they would like brush that off. They can push in a bit more. Too. But the other... More. Yeah. Crabs moving. Yeah, maybe it is sediment. The oh, there's a little the shrimpy. Though. Shrimpy. Okay. Yeah, That's right the below there, there's term. that uh, sort of bluish huh? looking thing that looked like a different type of soft coral, like a gersemia or something. Uh, where are they?
where the lasers are now? Yeah, right right where the lasers are. Yeah, I can go for a snap zoom there. I'll Snapping think. in here. Yeah. Holding. Yeah. Sorry. I'm like, like Coming out. Stick. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Uh, I got to get going. Getting a Atlantic. That's exactly two hours now. Yeah. Is this, are we actively doing this transect or not? No, I think we're still trying to reach the starting point, right, Rainy? That's correct. We're still going down yeah. slope and then yeah. where Adelanta is just about at the starting point. Once we get settled down there, we can get set up. Sorry, I just stop and smell that really cool flower. <laughs> Yeah, I think we can Come just call there. that sightseeing. Well, it's it's actually really good to get these zooms so that you can add more things to the animal guide. And when you get a good look at something, it's easier to identify it when you see it along the transect. It was interesting, when we were looking off to the side, there was kind of a little bit of terracing going on. Kind of a flat section, then a drop. And then it stops. Fabio, how long do these sea whips get here? How long? Yeah. Mm, I think, like, from that we see them a lot in Glycwood Slope and here, I would say they reach about 40 centimeters. Okay. Thanks. 40, 50 centimeters. You'll have to uh, come back up again as they come under you. Uh, they are at the whale fault. Uh, whale fault. Uh, they're abundant over there, too. Are we, which way are we going to go back up the hill, Rennie? We're going to go at a bearing of 310. <laughs> uh, I'm going to come the other way then so I don't. Uh, so we don't play through the dust on the way up. Yeah, Raj. After I thank Kate Moran uh, for the information on our uh, the types of sediments here on the canyon, she she thanked us back for the great tour of the seafloor, and she <laughs> says sometimes the vents get too much air time. <laughs> yeah, true. So the corals deserve some some highlights too, and canyons, and abyssal plains, and methane seeps. Yeah, all the deep sea. Environments well, is it, that isn't that That's part of good. why this is a great location for a cable ocean observatory is you have so yeah. many representative areas from the ocean happening so close to exactly land. They, the, the scientists they carefully plan out this ideal location for the for the cable observatory also shout out for all of the sounds that we hear here um, the hydrophones in this area give us lots of great um, hydrophone recordings as well because you get this congregation of all sorts of different animals and species. So we have some really great um, recordings of a number of different whales. Okay, 310. Fish. Fish, S yeah. Sea star will mark the begin transect. Okay, I'll 
mark a target here and then I'll get the ship moving. How about that? Yeah, We're going to go 310. Okay. Bridge nav. Asterisk of the sea. We'd like to move step 215 meters at bearing of 310, and we'll go 0 0.3 knots. 310. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll mark Hercules target here. Let me do a quick reset. Now that we've got DVL back. Hmm. Target. Start. Insect. Three. You can come down a bit there, Danny. And uh, bring your head around to 310. My head is at 310. What? Oh. Yeah, that's that offset. Oh, uh, you, <laughs> you can come around a bit more to the left. Just show me the tether there. Set. Looks like the current's going to keep it off to our left, so you can look quite a ways to the left. Beautiful. 270. 21 meters off bottom. I'll let you know when we get some ship forward way. Okay, ship's moving forward. Looks like Atalanta will take another couple minutes and be on the way. Right there. Bring the down lights back on. Dan and Danny, would a laser range finder work underwater? Absolutely. Laser metrology nowadays, you can buy instruments or rent to do uh, photogrammetry and lasers. So the um, Seattle Aquarium had a very active six gill program for many years, and they did their imaging using three lasers uh, and trying to back out what the angle of incidence was to the laser, you know what I mean? It's very yeah. rare that an organism is exactly 90 degrees oblique to the lasers. There was a camera around for a while that had three lasers in it. 
post processing. Get yeah. a really accurate. Because if the organism is not, you know, if it's not straight on and or directly left to right, then you need to get an exact measurement. You would need to back that out, and I think you need a third laser to do that. If you look at the latest issue of Ocean Planet, there's a really cool no, we uh, won't do that one. picture of uh, a LIDAR survey they've done on some decommissioning. Huh. See all the uh, rigging hanging off there. Rennie's a uh, former area of expertise. Yeah, it's now, uh, it's now a thing, so let's see. Metrology has kind of gone the way of the cassette player huh. or the DVD player nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do metrology, LBL, and you know, compacts and sit there and run back and forth and spin the compacts 90 degrees. And that's all LIDAR nowadays. Got a good view of the hook. Yeah. Current's favorable there, just keep an eye on that tether because start of last transect was 416. Oh, dude, they got a big hawk while there. See how it's starting to take a little twist there? Yeah, I'm coming up right now. Yeah, right. 30 meter tether, we can get the. That's about like as far, that would be far away. Grab my dust storm. Uh, some ROV. Some ROV has been here. Yeah. I don't know who it was. So I'm worried about with this heading. See if we come through it or not. Guess the currents weren't in our favor, huh? No. It's trying to be nice at the last there, so we won't have this. It's going to speed up a little, see if we can get through it. I'll say. Coming up so fast, my ears popped. <laughs> Matching your velocity. Just for folks tuning in, we're in uh, Barclay Access. We are, this is an expedition with Ocean Arcs Canada, and we're performing a transect. This is the third line. This is for species identification in the area. The particular area we're in is a, is a canyon. And we are a few hundred meters away from our observatory uh, sites at Barclay Hydrates and Barclay Mid East. And in 14 years, we haven't done a lot of exploration on this canyon, aside from the area of the observatory. So we are taking advantage of some bottom time here uh, in, in between some of the tasks. From here, we are flying back to our Barclay Axis uh, platform to perform some swaps of instruments. Right, Dirk? Yeah, and that is correct. In, in between, we are exploring these areas that have never been explored before. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to take a break <laughs> from swapping instruments. I know you like that. I do. It's fun. You got to plug in stuff yeah. and plug out. <laughs> Put oh cables no, under and put cables over. I, I like this. Roger. Moving all the time, I see. We got yeah, to do bubble, moving all the time. bubble catching. Yeah, so Roger. once we once we're done the coral surveys here, we'll head over to Barclay Axis. Where we continue the dive from this morning. Um, 
where we're deploying a ADCP. Um, we're going to deploy two larval traps and uh, also take some push cores and then recover the old ADCP. And what were the what will the push cores be analyzed for? That is Fabio, I think. <laughs> Uh, for a bunch of things, uh, we are studying the organic accumulation of, uh, in the canyon. So I was saying earlier, the canyon is a very active location where organic matter gets trapped and accumulates. So we have colleagues studying the evolution of this accumulation of organic matter. Well, that's a cool one. And we also have folks interested in microplastics had some uh, right. uh, yeah any uh, eDNA on these as well eDNA we already uh, did a, a we already have samples from two previous cruises and we are writing a paper okay already cool. so we collected eDNA at the whale site for another study but the, here in Berkeley we'll focus on uh, microplastics and organic matter cool. from the sediments and then the larval traps what are we learning there Oh, the larval traps, we are col passively collecting uh, meroplankton. So, so larval stages of all those, a lot of those invertebrates that you see on the seafloor right now. Bridge, now uh, did you copy? Hold position, please. Corals, sea cucumbers, crabs. So we are interested in uh, right, mapping out m more of the biodiversity than just the adult population because we know very little about the biodiversity on these oh. areas. And the, the larvae also helps us to kind of close the, the puzzle of how many species are here. We can also have an idea because we have... Cool fish. We have the traps set in Barclay Canyon, in, in Cascadia, and Endeavor. We can actually see this is a collaboration with, with colleagues from University of Oregon, uh, Craig, Dr. Craig Young, and we can know how far these larvae are traveling. So let's say mm -hmm. we are finding larvae here in Barclay Canyon of the same species finding a Cascadia basin. So we, s we can see the range of distribution of these species. Um, and then this is a really important information when now we have this large marine protected area here. We can better manage the uh, the species and the biodiversity because we know how far the species are can, uh, traveling or not. Bit, Danny, and look down and um, me. Me the we can know more about the extent of how to protect these animals. And uh, a passive trap, what does that mean? That means it's not actually luring, there's no bait. It's just... No, is this our... As folks will see later, yeah, those are PVC tubes pointing upwards and the passively drifting. So this larvae, they don't have any swimming capability against current, so they're just drifting with the currents. And when the currents are close to the bottom, they're normally pretty sluggish. So uh, I stopped them up. They'll just settle. Yeah, they Hold settle the into the tubes. Kind of like a rain trap or a sediment trap. Yeah, pretty much. So after a period of one year, we collect those back, and then we we analyze. Um, yeah, we can Is uh, identify all the species that are settled there, and there are hundreds. We already have a few preliminary results from the traps we deployed in 2020, and lots of lots of lots of animals. Particular endeavor was pretty rich sample. And Lots uh, of gastropods. And is this a standard standard trap? Uh, do many scientists use the same concept, or is this kind of a in-house? Or well, this is a design I believe was done by Craig Young, uh, and it's pretty clever. As 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 you know that we have that system for because we have chemicals inside the tubes, right? For fixate to uh, preserve the larvae. We have two of the two of the four tubes are filled with formalin, a formalin solution that we use to, <coughs> so we fix the larvae to essentially identify them taxonomically morph through their morphology. We put them under the microscope. And the other uh, chemical we use in two other tubes are dimactyl sulfoxide. That's for 
fixing the the integrity of the genomes so the DNA RNA so you can um, essentially what I was saying earlier Bring our head to the you right can use level. both approaches to identify the organisms using yeah. their genome and these are kind of capped down and the the flap or the lid kind of dissolves over time to open them up yeah so we need to bring them down in the RV with the liquid with the f with the formalin or the MSO without spilling out uh, right the RV breaks the water so it has this very clever ingenious way to close the traps uh, with a little rubber piece and then you put um, uh, it's almost like a, a tight bungee with a, a magnesium uh, fusible link yeah that you okay to resume there I think so yeah in Roger. 24 hours that thing dissolves and it opens up the trap and then starts collecting so with the, um, the trap that we had this morning on the dive we want to get Bridge that now placed soon yeah. Step one four zero <laughs> meters, oh. bearing three one zero. No, no, because oh, he, he became in contact with the water. Yeah, it's been sitting in the ROV. Yeah, it was too close when we, yeah, pretty, when you pretty much. It. Okay, so it will be a priority. Right now, the dive plan does place them first, which yeah. is probably good. They'll be placed before midnight, so yeah. and the dive didn't start till that would be an four interesting. So you've got twenty hours. Well, and to be honest, I think if they were sealed when we came down which would they were because i checked yeah we're good because now uh, these are high density liquids so they're hyper they're saline solution so they're not gonna and they flow out of the tubes well, two things i guess they're also got those weird funnel baffles in there as well don't they to from what i remember they got some baffles in there so liquid doesn't really want to just flow out of them this makes fish are so and the small. other thing is we'll be able to see with the rov whether they've opened by the yeah, time yeah. we place them yeah that's so. A so let's hope this magnesium fuses link sticks yeah. to the 24 hour timeline yeah we looked at them before they uh before we yeah came out of the hangar there and they were all okay so. yeah they're still good Gently place larval traps on sea floor. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what he's saying on the dive plan? No, but that's what we should do. Yeah. We, yeah, we will. Sh we should write it down. Watch. It's the first thing we'll do when we get there. Everything is gently. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first year, yeah. actually, we, we got Wally some. has joined the chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Have we ever not done anything gently or requested gently? I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Some gelatinous thing right there. Sea pig. Yeah. And the biologists chime in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that we've already been corrected that that is not a sea pig. No, that's how you. That's how you get the information. steps coming up. We were chatting earlier about uh, the two types of inking. Yeah. And uh, someone was just asking for a refresher on the names of those. So it's the cloud or the pseudomorph ink. And the pseudomorph inking just has a mucus added to it. So there you go to our listener out there. Someone's also wondering about the shadows that we see. I would think that this is the shadows from the ROVs. You've had some like jellies up in the light bars. Yeah. They make shadows. Yeah. They exaggerate the size of the organism though. It's like doing hand puppets or shadow puppets. When we end up diving at upper slope, uh, you see a lot of shadows because there's so many, um, both upper slope and the notes, so many of these cod, the black cod. Oh yeah throws these massive shark-like shadows across everything the whole time. It's quite interesting. Oh, I'm excited to see that. Upper Slope also has big yeah. halibut, so it's kind of cool to see some Are we allowed fish. to zoom? Uh, oh, yeah. never mind, never mind. Yeah. I thought it was something else. 
uh, oh, I'm seeing things. You Wishful thought it was thinking. a track of wrinkles? Uh, maybe something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Um, a while ago. But we are allowed to sit. There you go. Yeah, you are. You see something you like. We'll never get there. It's a snail. Is that a snail? A sea pig. No, the little <laughs> shell. <laughs> the shell. They're very similar. And some balula. A uh, margarita snail. So sea pigs are echinoderms, aren't they? Yeah, we don't have any here. No. no. <laughs> but we have, we have similar. We have other relatives, Panicia, like Moselle, or even that, that solid Oloturian with the white branches. Oh, there's something cool. What's Those that little thing? cucumbers, so technically they're cousins of sea pigs. Is that a little hagfish? That's something else. Looks like a little field or something. Eel pound? Yeah. Uh, Is that a baby wolf field? You, you oh, the guess. skinny um, fish that are on the bottom are Lion Kelly's, which oh. is an eel pout. Lion Kelly's. I like that name. Zoarcid, right? Yeah, it's a Zoarcid. That's another sea leap there. Is it related oh. to the wolf eel? Oh, look, there is. Hmm. Nope. It's a long shot. Someone else was curious about what we're flying. We got Herc and then also Atalanta. And we're using Atalanta for this Ocean Networks Canada expedition because it's just a little bit, um, we got lots of heavy equipment and things. In my understanding, it's just a bit more maneuverable than Argus. That's a good one, Pavia, yeah, right there. Yeah. Ooh. We're going to have the gigabytes of photos. Batsi Patis, <laughs> Batsi Patis, Pautula. 25 megabytes a picture, or 20, 35? 35 megabytes per well, picture. The raw file, I think, is 26, and then the these JPEGs that we're taking at the high resolution are probably around 8 or 10. It's pretty reasonable. And uh, we are have currently taken on this dive. Hard to say. 448.3. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen more. <laughs> well, how many we took on the photogrammetry of faulty towers? I think less than this. No. Well, I don't know. Clo oh, no, no. We took 900. I thought, the, I thought it was some... Better get clicking, Dirk. <laughs> the oh, the faulty towers. I wasn't there for that I one. I think it was some 3,000. <laughs> three to 6,000. Oh, okay. The wheel, wheel bone was around 1,000. Uh, yeah. Have the, the models of any of that stuff been published yet? Look at, look at this guy. I should run it, that it, on my computer. It, so what's that? Things like scientists are like doing nothing but analyzing pictures. <laughs> Dan was no, wondering. it takes some time to pull. They actually, Tom already gave us some uh, preliminary uh, uh, models. Oh yeah, but I haven't, uh, I haven't seen any in the feeds. <coughs> Not the whale, though. The whale is still waiting on. The, actually, that's a good question. How, for maybe from our data stewards, what's the? Because we already have the low res video from all our dives logged on SeaTube. The high res videos, when when is available to shore? You wanna Just after the vi the pop them up there for a minute. Okay. You want to hold? I will relay that question on to my colleagues. Okay. <laughs> Normally it's probably hold after after the cruise. So he's he's Tom is eagerly awaiting for the high res video files to start working on the. Photogrammetry of the oh, he has to wait till uh, we get back to the beach. Using the video, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think he's using the video and then stitching in some of the stills too, right? Nice. Yeah, combination of the two.
I'm surprised he's not watching us today. Is he also um, interested in corals? Um, I think so, actually. There, there are quite a, bit, uh, a few people that are doing photogrammetry surveys, actually, of the of canyon walls, actually, because you can you can map. Actually, they're doing multi-beam uh, horizontal multi-beam of this canyon walls, and they can map precisely the habitat of sponges and corals. So there are people interested in, in Come up a bit there, point yeah. cloud reconstruction mm -hmm. of coral walls, including our colleague Kathleen Robert in the east of Canada at Memorial University. She's one of the experts in doing that. So information from shore, the high resolution videos will be available shortly after Ed sends them to ONC. Shortly after? Shortly after Ed sends them to ONC, so shortly after OET sends them over. <laughs> yeah, we have to then has walk to approve those it. down the gangway, all right? <laughs> <laughs> they can't floppy fly. disks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't beam those ashore. Unless we have like 20 more Starlinks. Let's cover the top of the van in Starlink. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. It's quite different already compared to the previous transect. Yeah, the previous ver vertical one? Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the relief and how many overhangs we don't have as, as many overhangs as we had in the first one ready to keep on uh, i think i'm gonna slide to the north a little here Raj. quite a lot of um what are these tubular things you see in atalanta's view um when, when we had that a few years ago when we had those really sparse um what were those things fabio they, they were those uh, oh i know what you're talking about the pyro 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 zone. Pyro yeah zones. that was a weird there's so <laughs> many of those. Yeah. That was 20, 2017? Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, the sea pickle oh. attack. We had them for a couple of years, actually. Yeah, that was strange. Don't they come in at El Nino here? They, no. pro they came during the marine heat waves. They likely will come back. Part of the blob? Yeah. I remember them washing up on the coast of Oregon. Yeah. Them Everywhere. and uh, I don't know if they guys far north. Yeah, they were in Oregon. The Vallea, Vallea, Vallea. Okay, yeah. Right. Kick, kick type bridge crap. nav. We saw them on the seafloor. Step seven zero meters, bearing three one zero. At our with our cameras in Barclay Canyon, the, the, the observatory cameras that we have. We saw them loads piling up on the seafloor for a while. Wow. I've seen them washed up on Sombrio Beach. The yeah. Bellella. Yeah. And they're just like brilliant blue. Yeah. The Bellella Bellellas. Yeah, they're quite incredible. Looking. There was a bunch down in Southern California this past or yeah, month ago. How far are we from our end yeah, point? Uh, Hercules is about 50 meters from it. Okay. Okay. Good. And then after that, we'll move over to Axis. Roger. It'll be a perfect two hours and a half, as I promised to Megan. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't what you promised. This is all coming out of your larval trap deployment. Now it's going to be rushed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, oh, the spot. larval traps are, are fine. Yeah. You worried about that? I'm not worried. <laughs> You're making me worried. I'm the queen of worry. <laughs> It'll be okay. Oh, yeah. Rene's the king. Even What's that? <laughs> even if they are deployed, it's, they've right. been in the bio box. There's not a lot of sloshing in there. They'll be fine. She was saying she's the queen of worry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm full of anxiety. How do you think I do my job over here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Here, head to the right a little for me. So Fabio, current, what do you think? Current seems to any change. any uh, initial hypotheses for what we can gain from this well, survey this compared to the survey we took before? How would this add to that survey? Well, I I see more corals towards the upper part of the cliff. Always or the the canyon rim, right? That's your first impression? That's my first impression. So of course we are about hundred meters away from the the core of the oxygen minimum zone. So it could be that's a, a little relief from the the lowest, lowest point of oxygen. Um, but we are still looking at the the ADCP data from from our partly hydrates and axis and mid east and the ones with deployed at coral cliffs. Yeah. To look at these internal waves that how often they break. Uh, and the next step will be to analyze the so uh, the organic matter that gets resuspended from the, yep. the internal uh, wave breaking. So we see what what kind of particles these corals are feeding on, and how they can be so abundant in a low oxygen area. It's like a beginning of an exploration yeah but so we already we already have like the, the transects we did last year we already we have the colleagues in spain uh guillermo corbera and claudio loyacono and uh, we are already analyzed all the video and we are right now working on a manuscript so we'll soon have a preliminary uh, idea What's, what's driving the biodiversity of these corals. So if folks want to read up a little bit more about this conversation, you can head to oceannetworks.ca. If you just put in the search bar cold water corals, uh, your first hit will be researcher and resident Claudio Lo Lacona and cold water corals. And you can read out about what uh, Fabio is explaining right now. All those little red things kind of dotted the top of the canyon wall. Right? No. This coming over up over the lip. Fabio, have you a what? preferred spot for your uh, larval traps? At the axis? Yeah, yeah. Near course. the camera. No, no. I, oh, near the camera. Yeah. Okay. Not in the field of view, but near so that we can, if we want, to tilt up the, cam the pan and tilt and look at them. So outside of the tripod legs, yeah, but some eight eight. But meters. you still want to be able to see it, like eight meters. Is that yeah, kind of eight meters away? And right. actually, the camera, the axis now is is functioning, but the pan and tilt is not working. So, so in front of the camera still. Oh, eight no, no, I know it doesn't mean just nearby, okay. nearby. So you doesn't don't need to be in the field of view. Okay. Slowly coming towards the end of the survey. Wow, oh, beautiful sponge. Wow. Could, can we zoom in on that? Yeah, let me get a little closer here. We're Ooh. almost there. Is that a squat lobster or what is that? Looks like a spider crab. Spider crab. Dorman, going blind. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> oh, it's a sideways. <laughs> Squat lobster from the front, like spider crab from the uh, side. <laughs> missing an arm, maybe. There's another one right at the base. It's just kind of hiding. Yeah, this looks like a bathy Doris. Sponge. <laughs> Hang on, buddy. You can feel me bumping the clip there, is what he's saying. Oh, something's happening. I want to come up there, get the tether. Got another one coming around the back. Come up really nice and slow, Danny, because I'm perched on the uh, perched on the wall here. 
Oh, you want to push in there on the crab? Coming in. I'm going to hold here. I think you can reach the end anyway. Okay. Bridge Holding. nav. I just run. Hold position. Thank you. We're also at the uh, kind of the top where it's flat. So I guess I'll be fine if it overshoots Fish. a bit. Two. Push in between the tubes, want. yeah. Coral friends. Let's see what the Zeus Plus can do. Uh, got a little more. Oh. You mean like that? Yeah. You can see the flow and out then of the Let me just see there. if this changes my color at all. Unfortunately, we've we, go. we got to get going. Yeah. yeah. All right, coming out. The brow okay. cam shows an interesting view of what's inside of that. Oh, as yeah. Well. Just a hole. If only we had a mini I know, Zeus you up want there looking More there. cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and get you a t shirt. More cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and more lights to go with them. Yeah. Got to have the lights. The crew hide them from me. I swear we have 20 lights. All right, I'm full wide. Roger that. Coming out. I'll let you get sorted, then I'll uh, do my little push. Just another uh, 15, 20 okay. meters, and we'll be coming at in. the end. Right. Bam. Dan's ideal ROV would have 900 horsepower to be able to push all those lights and cameras through the water. 18 foot by Ooh. 22 foot syntactic foam. 360 degree view. <laughs> 4K, 30 frames a second. That's a giant ton of crap, looks like. One, two, three. Terracing uh, reminds me of finishing a scuba dive at Ogden Point, and having to climb up those bricks to get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it's a cool scuba dive, though, isn't it? It's very cool, but you know, you can only like get up laying flat. Then you got to do a push up with the tank on your back. <laughs> you got to do it like eight times to get out. I've it's only ever done the snorkeling there, but it was uh, pretty interesting. No, we dove from the uh, very end. Back. They had to carry your gear, or they had a wheelbarrow. We, we wore it. We oh, put it all it? in and wore it out. Yeah. Uh, What's the challenge? Kilometer. Tom, Tom, Tom wants to go scuba diving uh, in Victoria. Oh, it's it's here. just Ogden Point. Ogden really cool. Point's really fun. You can do a drift dive if you time it right. You, I mean, you got to walk a kilometer, but go out to the end, and then drift back in. That's really cool. Like it depending depending on the time of year. I think summer is good. The kelp is kind of, you want to go in, there's a lot of kelp. This is a really nice dive over on mainland uh, north of Horseshoe Cove uh, called Whitecliff Park. Mm. Uh, oh, there's a really good one. Uh, but man. summer's not, the water's not as clear, right? Yeah, summer's worse for diving here, much worse. Yeah, I don't know. I was just in a lot of kelp, and I noticed in the wintertime there seems to be no bull kelp at yeah, Ogden Point. Yeah, and the visibility is much better in the winter. But the bull kelp really attracts um, all those fish, which I find yeah. an interesting piece. No, I was, th I was thinking of Porto Cove. That's north of Horseshoe. Whitecliff Park is in north Vancouver, and it's got a uh, like 600-foot wall. You come up a bit there now, Danny. I think Saanich Inlet has some has some good diving, too. I know a lot yeah, of people sure. go in there. My yeah. friend's seen a six-gill in there. Oh, that's great. Like all Pacific Northwest diving, you have to really dive it slack, though. <laughs> it's actually, he didn't see it. His girlfriend was behind him and trying to get his attention because <laughs> there was a six kill and he, he was just kept it. going and he missed it and it was uh, like right next to him for a while. And then. Who was that? Who was uh, that? Just a friend of mine, right? Folks in science party land are wondering how deep you've dived, folks. 128 feet, almost four. How far is that? 40 meters? Uh, limits, limits for recreational scuba diving. <laughs> yeah, that's what you read. Yeah. How but that's a, that's a six minute dive. And you're not doing much down there. Go down, get down. 1.2 kilometers. 
<laughs> yeah, 6,000 meters if this counts. That's how, how deep I've been on the Pisces submersible. Ah, there you go. How, how deep? 1.2 kilometers. Oh, oh. oh, oh. Like in a personed sub? Yeah, in the submersible. Oh, cool. You win. Was that a hurls? <laughs> yeah. 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 Former hurls. Yeah, they're still sitting there waiting for you to uh, pick them up, put them in your uh, Maybe I'll front could yard. Could buy it. What'd you think, Dart? <laughs> <laughs> Quick shake of the head. Just have a look to you pick them up, and then uh, they, can, <laughs> they can do all the maintenance they want to themselves. That kind of would be uh, back where they came from, right? Exactly. Is that where they started? Yep. Yeah, we're almost Pisces done here. Ford did, yeah. Ropa still has tools that have Pisces 4 on them. Just about at the end there, Fabio. Yeah, great. Um, so, yeah, we can call it call it a quits. I think we are all out of the the vertical. Yeah. Yeah, nothing so on the sonars here. Break. We can call okay. it. Uh, I'll just do a... Drop a target for data back there. Oh, is there more cliffs up here? What's going on here? Oh, look. The other they side. have a deep. That's the other side, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just uh, a little depression. It's a shadow. Over. All right. <laughs> We've seen. Got a cliff on the brain. Okay, then you can come back down a little. Yeah, and those subs are made in Vancouver. Oh, can we try and zoom on this tuna port? Yeah, let me turn off the light. Yep. Where'd he go? Right below the lasers, now in the lasers, now above the lasers. Yeah, I see. Might, yeah. might want that light back on because I was trying to get the cilia glowing. There we go, thanks. Snap Come in, little, holding. While we're waiting. I'll just let go of the sticks. Thought it was going to bounce back in. It's not really doing much. No. Ah, uh, there's a little glimmer of it. Hey buddy, turn on your LEDs for Yeah, us. exactly. Oh, well, we got some luminescence there. Uh, it's the reflecting our light oh, back reflecting. at us, but they're little cilia that are like moving, so they're catching different. That's cool. I can get closer. Oh, we're pretty steady. Let me get a more zoom on it. Okay, um, back row, Yep. do we have any more tasks here? Uh, well, that concludes our work here. Okay. Next, straight to the access IP. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dan. That's Whichever right, way is fastest. Danny. It's a pleasure. Yeah, um, Bridge thinks we can go not, so we'll try that. Um, Which way are we going? Are we we will be going, yeah, we will be going 6-6. Six, six. We don't have, the winds aren't too high, so he can change head a Coming bit. Out. Okay, let me uh, turn and burn and get out in front there. Roger. Sorry, Hopefully. what was the bearing again? Uh, zero, six, six. Zero, six, six. And we will be going downslope for a bit. Um, I'll leave it up to you if you want to track the bottom as best you can, or if you want to mid midwater. Um, Depends on how the, steep it is. Yeah, yeah the path itself, um, I don't believe we will get as shallow as we are right now for the entire we're kind of going up through the canyon itself um so i don't i don't think we'll have any hazards there right. um but if we're close to the bottom we'll obviously have to and we're going in out we'll obviously have to be winching up pretty swiftly if we, because we'll be laid back a bit. Mm -hmm. Full power, Hercules. Um, if we do go down, Dan, into this valley here, I'm a little worried when we're going a knot that we'll be able to winch up fast enough over this hump here. Because that's about where we are right now, that, about that depth. But after that, it'll be in the valley. Okay. You can Reset you. Kick them into gear there. Watch. Bridge, nav. Uh, come down, Danny. 
Were you not going to collect any Paragorgia? We can uh, start that move, uh, speed one knot, again, we, to the selected we ran target. Out of time. We have to scoot faster. Thank you. To Barclay Access to com complete okay. the. Okay. I'm just curious. We'll do it next time. Down, Danny. Coming down. Beautiful view, though. Yeah. So for folks oh, drop tuning in, we are in the Barclay Canyon area off the coast of Vancouver Island, in the that's Northeast a, Pacific Ocean. That's a bubble gum if you want one. We're at a depth of 900 and, well, we'll be heading down to 984 uh, meters. Down five meters. We're now at 793. 793. Ah, oh, Buster, I'm fighting my tether there. And we're doing maintenance and um, deploying some experiments at uh, on the Ocean Networks Canada infrastructure. And shout out to people in the United States, Canada, Australia, Sri Lanka, Kazakhstan, United Kingdom, Egypt, and the United Arab Emirates for watching. Sorry, Randy, what was the bearing again? Zero six six. I wonder if the UAE is my brother. <laughs> He's in uh, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. I'll let you know if he writes in. Yeah. Hi, Rob. And I think I recall that it's going to take take a bit of time to get over to this back to the instrument platform area. Correct? About an hour. An hour. An hour and a half, I'd say, yeah, by the time we get going and stopped up. All right. But we haven't started moving yet. Okay. <laughs> when we get there, we'll be doing some push core samples. We're going to be deploying some larval traps. Bridge nav. Uh, we're ready to proceed. Thank you. And we're also going to be deploying uh, the come up a few meters, ADCP, come up which is meters. an acoustic Doppler current yeah. profiler, helping us understand the internal waves in this canyon-ish canyon area. Are we flying this or getting towed? Yeah. Flying. The ship ever starts moving. Yeah. <laughs> do that. Hot pursuit. 
Nice job. You want me to keep that zoom? Let him no, go. I can't. Let, He's let too get fast for me. Ah, shoot. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Coming out. Nice job. Too fast, and I have no leash. I'm at the end of the tether here. There's no ROV people on the leg back, right? The transit? I don't know. I don't think there are. I didn't see any names on the list unless that's changed. I'd love to get I'm that uh, camera body uh, realigned in that housing. Yeah, we might. Well, we could swap it out with the other one. All these years, I never knew there was a set screw for that. Well, that's because all these years they've never written a manual. That one's way out. That was kind of a hurry up. Hey team, it's Marley. I just switched out with Lauren. Hey Marley. She hey Marley. told me that we just are switched out with Lauren. We are uh, in the middle, or we're we're transiting for the next hour and a half. Is that what's happening? Once we get moving, yeah. <laughs> Exciting. Okay, so we're gonna have some time to kill. Yes. Uh, Dan's gonna try to track the bottom, so we'll have some That's some right. things for our viewing pleasure as we go. Cool. Look at that ugly crab. Oh, there's two? Two of them. Yep. Go for a zoom there. Ed. Coming in. Laser zoom. Holding. Your friends or enemies? Yep. I'm guessing the four. They're a mated couple. He's waiting for her to molt. Push in a little more if you want. Are you talking to me or the crab? <laughs> oh, we <yikes>. hate <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for her to molt. Yeah, so they can't um, copulate until she molts her hard shell. So he has to wait for her mm. until she molts the next time. So you see how like dirty they look? Uh, they're getting close to that time, so uh, they're just going to hang out together, and he's going to protect her until that time. And then when she take? molts, she's going to release a uh, hormone to keep him from eating her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's the timeline like that? It's months? Or um, I'm not sure. Weeks? It it might be, you know, a few weeks to a month before it happens. I was going to say, it looks like they've been here for a while. Yeah, they might have been together for a while. He just... You never know, but when you find your partner in the deep sea, you kind of want to stick close to them, because how are you going to find them again? Hmm. Hmm. They have sponges growing on them. Is yeah. this so? I mean, how often they is do. this event? Is this an annual thing, or? Um, yeah, it's usually annual for most crab species. It's a lot of patience. Okay. Yep. Looks like they have a good spot there. Here comes the dust. Okay. I think. Is Atalanta moving now? Uh, the ship is moving. Atalanta should start. Or maybe has started a little. Uh, swap out at video. Roger. I'll turn our down lights back on. Yeah, I can give you what Hercules coordinate is right now. Oh, 
be the end of the tether. I can come down, I think. No, oh, you're all right. All right. You're 23 meters up. You're shallower than I am. Yep. Mm -hmm. Zoom in on that guy if you want, Pete, while we're waiting. I want to steal a bubble. Yeah. Okay, ship speed is up to 0 0.7. So it'll start cooking once we move. Right. Roger. Okay. Go wide, thanks. Gauges are dark. <laughs> Turn on the light for you. <laughs> you just hit the preset, it should do the iris back to where it. I don't know why it keeps irising down. I think I got a ball. About the same sponge? been here before. <laughs> Amazing. Couldn't do that if you tried. Is this as about abundant as the corals get down here? They're not, they're kind of sparse like this? We did a, um, a survey last year on just on the other side of the canyon, just maybe 500 meters from here, and it was much more dense yeah. than this. So it does change. It gets a lot more dense, but we just, this is the first time we looked here and it was kind of. I think this is the depth that we will be coming up to after this shallow bit. All right. So just, we'll have to, we'll be laid quite back, so just be aware. Right. Ship speed is now a knot. Mine is not. We have a quick question about the visibility level for Hercules, like how far we can see with our lights, I guess, is what the question's asking. Is it basically just a couple meters in front of us? Depends on turbidity of the water. Yeah. Yeah, here in Barkley Canyon, I would, we're looking down, so if I look up with the camera, it disappears there. Yeah. Probably. Five meters, it's dark. How far off the bottom are we right now? Um, I'm quite, quite high, eight meters. But uh, I just let go of it there for a minute. To come back down. <coughs> yeah, we can see straight down a lot better, obviously, because we get the reflection of right. the light on the... We're out in clear water, we can see 
obviously Atlantis 30, 40 meters above us and we can see. First time I came out here, we were in a caged vehicle uh, with Ropos and we were like 60 meters off the seabed and I was freaking out. We need to come up, we're gonna hit. <laughs> See the bottom perfectly. <laughs> the Zeus camera was like a whole new world for me. Dan, when was your, you can, can what, what year was your else. first time on a Nautilus? A Nautilus, yeah, uh, 2018, I think, 2017. Oh, okay. 2004 was my first uh, trip to Endeavour. I was immediately hooked. Yeah, it's a pretty cool spot. Well, I did uh, Axial Land Endeavor. Oh, that was cool. Uh, yeah, I did uh, six years at um, Axial and then came up here. Very different. Yeah. I haven't done Axial, only Galapagos. Quite the laid back. Yep. Uh, currently laid back about 100 meters. How far is the? How far away is it? Two kilometers. What kind of headway is a vessel making? Uh, speed? Yeah. One knot. Oh, and that's, good. that's called in, so it shouldn't go further than that. It's uh, still DP at the moment. Yeah. They did indeed turn their heading. Yes, they did. No wind, they can get away with it, man. Yeah. Uh. Look at our dust storm behind us. <laughs> it's going to be erect for days. Oh yeah, the out. It's like scraping the bottom. No, it's just stirring it up. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I'm touching back there. It's just a... Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe. Okay, we're approaching the deepest point. Uh, we'll yeah. be about 50 meters out, and then from there we'll have to winch up a bit. Steady watching that sonar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Starting to show up in Argus. Uh, That's behind. Uh, yeah. Two kilometers away. Pinned. Come on, Herc, show us what you got. Uh -huh. 